Blessed Anna Maria Tiji prophesies a coming chastisement to Rome, and she has supernatural knowledge of a pope. This is the fifth video of our series in Blessed Anna Maria Tiji's life. If you're interested in the previous ones, I'll link at the end of this video. But just as a reminder, she is a Catholic mystic who has been given a special grace unlike any other mystic in the Catholic Church. God gifted her this luminous disc that would she would see with her eyes wide open, four feet in front of her, one foot above her head, about the size of the sun, if we would look at the sun, but would glow with the greater brilliance of the sun. But when she would look into it, she would not have any damage to her eyes. And this is what God used to reveal to her supernatural knowledge. For she would look into that sun and see different things of the past, the present, and the future. Cardinal Petticini, who was a cardinal in Rome in the 1800s, knew her personally and put forward her cause for beatification. In terms of timeline, Blessed Anna Maria Tiji died in 1837. And this is what Cardinal Petticini said regarding this luminous disc that was the way God used to reveal to her prophetic things and supernatural knowledge. She discerned the secret thoughts of persons who were present and even such as were far off. The events of men of the past and of the future were before her at will. With all the circumstances appertaining both natural and moral in the fullest details, thanks to this extraordinary, truly unexampled favor, Anna Maria possessed and enjoyed the knowledge of all things in God so far as may be had in this life. Pope Pius VII eventually heard about Anna Maria Tiji and her unusual mystical gift and this luminous disc that she could see. And so he sent a message to her one day and asked her to write about something regarding his own life. Now, I'm just guessing that he heard about her and this alleged mystical, ex these experiences and this prophetic gift and maybe he just wanted to test it out. I don't know, because the word on the street is that she sees things of the past, present, and future when she gazes into this luminous disc. <laughs> so the message gets to Blessed Anna Maria, and she realizes the Vicar of Christ is requesting her to write something about his own life. And so she picked a very simple topic. So she took up her pen and chose a very simple subject, a circumstance relating to the childhood of Pope Pius VII, which she described in its minutest particulars. The Pope was surprised and said it was perfectly all true. Pope Pius VII had personal first-hand experience of Blessed Anna Marie Tiigi. He verified that the supernatural knowledge revealed to her was true. I think this is truly remarkable. Not only did Blessed Anna Maria Tiigi see things of the past, but she also saw things of the future, events yet to come. And she would prophesy sometimes regarding them. One particular event stands out in my mind for today, and that is a chastisement that was to fall upon Rome. And this is in regards to the Basilica in Rome, St. Paul's. There's four major basilicas, and the Basilica of St. Paul's is one of them. This basilica is unique because Constantine commissioned its construction in 324, so it's old. And Blessed Anna Maria Tiji had a habit of going there and praying before a crucifix. And this is what the Lord revealed to her when praying there one day. She saw the burning of St. Paul's Basilica several months before it took place while praying before the Holy Crucifix. And she knew by revelation that God permitted this disaster in punishment for profanations that had been committed there. The voice said, I will make of this place a heap of ruins. And in this instance, her fervent prayers were unavailing. What I find interesting about this is why did God allow the Basilica of St. Paul's to burn? Well, according to the private revelations of Blessed Anna Maria, because sin was committed in that place. Now, it's an uncomfortable conversation, I think, sometimes within the church. Does God still chastise his people? What do you think? Look at what has happened over the last two years regarding COVID-19. There was a great hesitancy to even consider 
that God would somehow use that suffering or have has permitted that suffering in some way to chastise us. This chastisement is a, it's almost like a, a swear word within the church. Chastisement is just a means by which God draws us to himself so that he could give us himself fully and completely. Sin offends God. It separates us from him. It's a sin is a misuse of the free of our free will. And because God is love and he wants nothing but the best for us, he will do everything within his power short of taking away our free will to give himself to us. And so does God sometimes chastise the ones he loves? Yes. So that he could give us the best, which is himself. These chastisements that God allows, these sufferings that he allows sometimes in our lives are for for what purpose? So that we turn from sin, repent, and trust in his mercy and his love for us so that we would find a deeper union with him. Now, with the Blessed Anna Maria Tiesi, she was all about the salvation of souls. I mean, that was her first concern regarding everything that I've read in her life. And when she would see events, it seems like we can categorize the prophetic things she would see into three categories. First category, she would see things in the future. And no matter how many prayers were said or sacrifices were made, the, the event could not be changed. And this was an example that I just mentioned regarding the the fire, the Basilica of St. Paul's in Rome. Second event that I've noticed when studying her was that she would see things and that through prayer and through sacrifice, the event could be changed that was coming in the future. And the third event that I've realized when Blessed Anna Maria would see something, it was neither through prayer or sacrifice that the future event would be changed, but simply by making a decision in the present to avoid something in the future. For example, one time she looked in this luminous disc and she saw a prominent cardinal. And he saw that he was going to walk in the evening in Rome, in a particular place in Rome, and there was going to be people waiting there for him and they would kill him. So she saw this unfold in the luminous disc and then sent a messenger to the cardinal saying that if he was going to walk that evening to take another route because of the danger that was before him, Well, the Cardinal had not told anyone that he was going to take a walk that evening, nor revealed where he had planned on going, so this caught him by surprise. And so he just changed his route. He took another sidewalk. (laughs) But here's an example where Blessed Anna Maria Tiesi just gave some advice and say, make a different decision now to avoid something in the future. Now remember, Cardinal Pettuccini said that when she would look into the luminous disc, she would see things past, present, and future. Regarding the past, she would sometimes look into the luminous disc and contemplate and see the mystery of the life of Jesus Christ, place things in Jesus' life, details that are simply not recorded in Scripture. If she thought of the Garden of Olives, for example, she beheld the whole scene, the treachery of Judas, every detail of the agony, the flight of the apostles, and all the indescribable sufferings of Jesus. What a delight, writes the confessor. Was it for pious souls to hear Anna Maria talk of the journey into Egypt, of the Last Supper, and other mysteries of the Savior's life? She also saw all the details of the life of Mary, lived in the house of St. John the Evangelist after the ascension of her divine son. A couple days ago at the dinner table, I was sharing about Blessed Anna Maria Tiji, this luminous disc, and how she could see things with the kids. And we're talking about it, and one of my daughters said, you know, well, if I saw this luminous disc, I would look into it, and do you know what I would want to see? I said, what? She said, I want to see when I'm 60 years old. I'm like, well, why would you want to see your life when you're 60 years old? She's like, well, I want to see what I'm going to look like. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then I reminded my daughter that Blessed Anna Marie Tiiji could have done that. But it's very clear that she did, she did not misuse this gift. And when she looked into this luminous disc, this glowing sun, it was always for the betterment of people's souls, to win souls for heaven. So she never looked into this luminous disc out of curiosity. 
if she revealed something, it was always to help somebody in some way. And sometimes it was just a natural thing. Like uh, a woman came to her one time complaining that her hands weren't laying eggs. So she looked into the luminous disc. Something was revealed to her. She conveyed it to the woman to help her hands lay eggs. Now, if she did that, it must have been to help this woman. And somehow this was going to help her, <laughs> her service to God, I guess. But her confessor was clear that when she used this gift, it was not out of curiosity. What's going to happen tomorrow? Just out of curiosity. No, it was always for the glory of God and for the salvation of souls. And one thing I find interesting about this is I've been reading about her the last, now it's been over a month, is why we haven't heard about her before. Like maybe you knew about Blessed Anna Maria Tiji, but I've never heard her name mentioned ever. Yet she seems to have one of the this most incredible mystical gift that, that's really unlike any other mystic in the church. So why haven't we heard about her? Come here. <clears throat> why haven't we heard about <laughs> Blessed Anna Maria Tiji? Yeah, I don't know either. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts below. I'd appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you soon. God bless you. See you on next Wednesday. All right. Hey, friends, if you're interested in more Blessed Anna Marie TG, I have some videos linked here at the end of this video. Secondly, if you've been blessed by our content and you would like to help us bless others, we are in need of people to support us on a monthly financial basis to help keep all our content free for the world. Everything that we produce is free. We don't charge a thing. And that is because of our supporters, which we are really grateful for. If you'd like to join our team and help us in our mission to spread the beauty of the Catholic faith through a hurting world, head over to canandjanelle.com and there is a means to support monthly through PayPal. Thank you so much for the consideration.